Hello, my name is Mary Faith Jones, and today I'll be discussing with you how to identify and manage parasitic infections in ruminants. Let's begin by discussing what parasites are. Parasites are any type of organism that makes its home in or on a host. What makes them parasitic is that they cause harm to the host in the process. The reason these organisms inhabit their host is to replicate, use them as a food source, or to gain an advantage over the competition. So, how do you know if your animal has a parasitic infection? While there are many kinds of parasites, the external symptoms they cause can be quite similar. These symptoms can be a good indicator to producers that their animals have a parasitic infection as the underlying cause. Some symptoms or signs of this are poor coat quality, scours, bottle jaw, weight loss, lethargy, pale membranes, reduced production, reduced fertility, appetite changes, death, and nutrient deficiencies. So what parasites are the most common and how do you test for them? While there are many kinds of parasites, some are more common than others and they can vary by species. These can be changed by region, so we will discuss a general list of common parasites. However, it's important that producers know what parasites are common in their area. This information can be obtained at your local extension office. Some of the most common parasites in ruminants are hairworms, tapeworms, coccidia, barber pole worms, liver flukes, strongyloides, and brown stomach worms. So how do you test for these parasites? The way that a producer or vet tests for worms can vary. This is a small list of some of those methods. Famancha is effective in determining barber pole induced anemia in sheep and goats. The paler the membrane, the more severe the infection. A fecal sample will be obtained and broken down into three gram samples for the fecal egg count. They will then determine the parasitic density in the size sample and prescribe a treatment. Post-mortem identification, some parasites like flukes can't be identified in stool, so they can be found in a necropsy of the liver and abomasum. And the last method is a fecal float test. A sample of feces is placed in a device filled with water and topped with a slide. After a period of time, the slide is examined under a microscope and any eggs or parasites can be seen. So, how do you prevent parasites? Drug-resistant parasites are an issue in the animal industry. They are created when producers over-medicate against parasites. This allows the parasites to build up a resistance. The best way to treat infections and stop the occurrence of these drug-resistant parasites is to prevent them in the first place. The first method of prevention is pasture rotation. The first method of control is pasture rotation. Overgrazing a pasture is one of the number one ways that parasites are spread. By rotating a minimum of every six days, producers can reduce parasitic infection. The reason that overgrazing leads to parasitic infection lies in the life cycle of parasites. Parasite eggs are excreted through feces of animals. These eggs hatch and climb to the top of the grass. When an animal eats the grass, the cycle continues. The longer the animals remain in the pasture, the larger the density of parasites, and the more likely they are to spread to help the animals. The next method of control is animal grouping. The next method of prevention to an outbreak of parasites in a herd is utilizing animal grouping. This means that you group animals based on certain aspects, whether this be their age group, or by species. An example of separating by age group would be by grouping juveniles and older animals, as they are the most susceptible. It also could mean housing different species of animals together. An example of this would be grazing cattle and horses with sheep and goats, or place them in the pastures after rotating the others out. However, be careful to avoid overstocking, as you'll come to the same issues as before. So, how do you treat a parasitic infection once your animal already has it? 
There are many options for the treatment of parasitic infections. The type that is used is dependent on a few factors. Price, type of parasite, type of animal, age of animal, and operation setup. A few methods of deworming are Coron warmer, which is absorbed through the skin, pellets, which are eaten, injections, paste, which is eaten, drench, which is squirted down the throat. These treatments can be obtained from your local feed store or from your veterinarian. Thank you for tuning in today. Have a nice day.